Hey everybody, it's Paul with CDA Software. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's video. So in today's video, this will be the second scenario that your technicians will be faced with when they do mobile parts receiving. So the scenario that we're going to find ourselves in is that for our particular demo, the workflow that the company will be doing is that they will not receive the part. They will simply just assign the carrier tracking information to a PO. So what we're going to do is we're going to see exactly what that looks like. But the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and move the Android phone out of the way. And then what I want to do is I just want to pull up the purchase order. So let's do that. And so what we're going to do is we have our PO. So this is our PO. Our PO has a claim number. So this is our claim number. And what we learned from previous videos is that in best practices, we would want you to have the date received fill in, filled in, excuse me, which would then auto populate the track carrier tracking information. So in this scenario, what has happened is these, this company's workflow does not do parts receiving, which means there's going to be a little bit more work for the mobile technician to do, but he can still get the job done. So in this scenario, we will not be receiving the part. What we're going to do and what we have to do, we at least have to enter in the carrier tracking information. So we're going to right click. We're going to say add carrier tracking number and we're going to add it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, add it again. So right click, add carrier tracking, go ahead and get that in there. And now we can see we have carrier tracking which means when your technician goes to do mobile parts receiving, they will be able to be successful. So now let's continue on with our demo. So here we are, just like our previous scenario, where we need to do mobile parts receiving, we're just going to go up to the three dots, dot, dot, dot. We're going to click on that. We're going to come right down here to parts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want to receive parts. So just like our first scenario, so we're just going to go through the same practice as before. We're going to click right there, receive parts. And then just like before, it's going to say, hey, tech, go ahead and scan that carrier tracking number. And as I mentioned before, it's going to happen rather quickly. Uh, so there may not be much to see before we go on to the next prompt. But let's go ahead nonetheless and scan. And there we go. It moved over. Now what we're going to do, notice how this looks a little bit different than when you follow the best practices where the customer or the company and the demo did parts receiving. Now it's going to tell our technician, hey tech, go ahead and take a picture of the packing slip. Now notice they have to do this in order to move forward. So let's go ahead and do that. So now what's happened is we went ahead, we took a picture of the packing slip, which is going to be uploaded to the front office. And then more importantly, notice how it found the PO number. So notice it says, is the PO number provided on the packing slip? We went ahead and we found the PO number. We matched it with the carrier tracking. Now let's slowly read this text. And then I want to show you something that's extremely important for everyone that's in the front office or if you're a technician. It says, we auto-filled your PO purchase order from the carrier tracking as this number. Please confirm before hitting next. This is extremely important. And I'm going to go into some scenarios that both the front office and mobile technicians to be aware of. And it says, hey, if your PO was, does not match, Enter the correct PO number above. You'd retype it here and then click next. Or if you don't know what the PO, go ahead and say no PO provided. And what this will do is this information will go ahead and it will be uploaded and presented to the front office. But now what I'd like to do is I'd like to pause just for a moment. And this is very important what we're going to show you that definitely needs to be understood by our technicians and communicated from the front office. It says, hey, please confirm the PO is correct. Now you don't just want to tell your text to always just agree. 
what I want to do is I want to bring up some different packing slips so that you can teach your technicians that when they order from you know your top 99 percent of vendors you're going to have to teach them to where they should look for the po you should not just assume that your technicians will know where the po is located so it's going to be very important that you train your technician to look where to find the po for each unique vendor so you can see You'll need to show them where the PO is on this, from this vendor. Here's another vendor. You'll need to teach them where the PO is located. Here's another vendor. Again, you'll need to teach them where to look for the PO and so on and so on. So each vendor that your technician is going to be taking a picture of, they will need to be taught by the front office how do they find the PO. Again, here's another example. So these are showing you all the different scenarios that your technicians will be faced with because you don't want them to just click next and you don't want them to just say no PO provided because that just slows down the processing of a claim. So if you take just a little bit of time to teach your technicians, they will become more proficient in using this system. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and say next because we're going to agree and so now where we're at is we're now in the next step where it says hey tech you have or you should have two parts from this carrier tracking and from the packing slip and so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the same process as before and we're going to click on the compressor and now, once again, as we did in the first scenario, we're just going to follow these prompts where we're going to be prompted to go ahead, scan a QR label, put it on the part, take a picture, and then we're going to say finished. So let's go ahead and run through those steps. So we're going to grab a unique QR code and we're going to add it to the compressor. And then we're just going to go ahead and click finish. Once again, we have a circle check. And now what we're going to do, this means the tech needs to do it one more time. So let's just go ahead, run through the same process. We're going to go grab the EVAP. We're going to grab a unique QR code. We're going to stamp it on there and we're going to write down the claim number. So let's go ahead and go through that. And there we go. Now we're going to say finish. And there it shows that we have successfully checked in the two parts and we did everything that we were supposed to do. Once again, in this scenario, what we were showing you is that the part has not been received by the front office, which is OK. But as long as we have carrier tracking on the PO, your technicians can successfully do mobile parts receiving. And that will conclude today's video.